you know, they have, they really have no idea as to how to price something. So that's, that's why they'll do that. I see that quite often on Facebook and other social media groups. And yeah, it's, uh, you know, they, they definitely have to learn it themselves. You know, that's why I, I you know, I harp production rates. If you can, if you, if you can document your production rates on every service that you offer, that's the whole beginning of your pricing. That's going to make things so much easier for you. But yeah. I'll have some people send me RFPs that are, I mean, multiple pages, you know, for some of these very large accounts. And, you know, I, you know, I can't just do this for you because they take days to go through, yeah. <laughs> you know. So. Exactly. Oh, yeah, man. And that's why that is the number one thing that we've been, it is like, we have literally have a mathematician in the office with us, right? Right? Like that helps us try to figure out this betting, bidding and estimating tool. But there is too many scenarios, too many factors to try to, to be 100% accurate, where the best we could do is, you know, 90%, 92%, where at least it gets you to where you could feel comfortable. And then, and then the rest is what state you're in, you know, that, that client's, you can't measure client's expectations. That's the number one thing we're learning that I, oh man, you guys, you know, it, it, it told me, you know, $2,456 a month. And after all my costs, you know, I'm only making like $200 a month. Well, that didn't take into consideration your customers are going to inspect your work five days a week. Like they're going to find something. She's asking you to go back. Then you're spending 10 minutes a day, 50 minutes a week. I did not calculate that. <laughs> that was not part of the calculation. Sure. So we got to be careful, you know, when we're telling people. That's why I'm always open. Like, you know, hey, this will get you close, you know. Then, then let's talk through the other, you know, numbers. Or give yourself time as a business owner. Like two, three years of doing this, you'll figure out what your production rate is. Yeah. Yeah, you know, because that, that's really is so important, when, especially when you start talking about expenses. Um, a lot of uh, small start, you know, uh, small companies what those are and that's really the key you know how can we we can arrive at a price point pretty easily but that's fine and dandy but we have to really come up with what what is our profit for this account and the only way we can do that is if we know our expense numbers you know yeah. liability insurance and all that other stuff but that's really the key you know so that's where a lot of people struggle at and you know i always i always advise them you know uh you know, you're paying your insurance agent, you know, X amount of dollars for that premium and, and some of these other resources that you have. Use them because, you know, they're on your, you know, they're literally on your payroll. Use them. Oh, yeah. they're, they're your resource. You know, if you can't figure out what your percentage is for workman's comp or this, that, or the other, give them a call, have them help you walk you through it and figure it out for you. Yeah. You know, it's, man, Steve, that's like a topic that, you know, and again, th I'm using this to think of some topics for us for that for the podcast, right? Because I think it's it's just a good coaching episode would be good because that right there, what you just said, we took that into consideration with route and our estimator in the software is pretty complex, but it's because that's the way I figured out my pricing, right? Like you said, janitorial bond insurance, workman's cop, uh, you know, line item, line item. As we saw the first hundred customers jump on board, 90% of them were like, you know, I don't know any of this. This is too much. I, this is complex. I just want to know my all in $25 an hour charge and I'll figure my cost out, you know, as I, as the months go by, I'm like, yeah. man, yeah, but you're right. Cause that's exactly what I did is I went to my, I went to Dave. I said, Dave, what is my dollar over my, what is, what do I have to put on top of my hourly rate to calculate my workman's comp, my general liability and my umbrella? Cause I've got all three with you. I know you can figure this out. Give me my number. He gave it to me, right? Three ninety six. He said three dollars and ninety six cents, Ricky, is what you put every hundred dollars of payroll. Blah blah blah. I, I just asked him, you know, and he, and he spit it out and gave it to me. So now that's the number I tack on, on top of supplies, on top of you know. It took a little bit of work. I'm not a and I'm not an accounting guy, but I asked those questions. I got the answers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, you hit it right on the head there. It takes a little bit of work, but it's, it, it pays big dividends in the long run. Oh, huge, huge. We're yeah. so confident in our numbers that like, 
my my again family right my, my brother is my cfo of all three companies he's he's a master's in accounting came from corporate uh just wants to be part of the family business now and this guy knows nothing about cleaning that just started six months ago steve he can price pretty much everything out now because he's like rick I, I can because i know our cost he's like i know our cost i know what i want to make as a profit for the company because you pay me to know their numbers to make us profitable. I don't need to know cleaning to per se. Per, I mean, again, to if you right. show me if you show me a spreadsheet with numbers, I can tell you if this is going to accurately be profitable for us. Like, do I know carpet cleaning square you know pricing? No, but you told me it's twelve cents per square feet for this type of square footage. But that's all I need to know. It's like just I care about cost. If I know my cost, I know what you guys can charge as salespeople that will be healthy for us to continue to grow. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Without that, you, you cannot grow. You cannot scale. Yeah. No, no, I'm over here, man. We are scaling and I'm, and it's fun to see because I, I, I live an awesome life here right now with the fact that all, I have 17 family members that work here under the same roof. So I got a lot on my shoulders, right? I, yeah. I've got both my, my side of the family, my wife's side of the family, but everybody's having fun. Everybody's struggling together. We have bad days together, um, but we we're winning business because people like to do business with people they like to work with here in Chicago, especially. Um, and the, we've got clients that are just blowing up. So we're, we're just, I like to say we're lucky, but at the same time we put ourselves in that spot, you know, so yes, that, you did. we'll jump, yeah. I'll jump all over. People say, Rick, you can't have too many, you know, you know, the one or two clients should be that big of your business. But I'm like, well, what am I to say no to them continuously giving me more business? I can't say no. <laughs> yeah, that just means you got to get out there and get some other customers, you know, to yeah, equal yeah. up that balance. Yeah. You got to love it. That's my like number one goal. I, I focus solely on route right now, but the stuff that I do help on with Rosalato it, is sales. I mean, I, I help with the bigger multi-facility account clients and yeah. I just know how to find, like the, we call it, um, I forgot what we call it, ICP, I think, right? Where you identify your customer or prospect. Uh, there's an acronym for everything, but yeah. like we, we've, we, that's what I help with. I figure, I, I let people know, hey, you know, it works to have this type of client on our portfolio. Let's scale with this kind of client instead of the one-off stuff. Yeah, very nice. Well, you know, speaking of route, you know, that's, uh, uh, you know, I imagine, uh, first of all, I'd like to know where, where'd this uh, come from? Did it just evolve from you being in the business and you thought, wait a minute, I, I see that there's a void that needs to be filled? Yeah, so it, it literally, I mean, that's exactly it, Steve, too. So here in Chicago, we have a big tech hub called 1871. So it's, it's really a, one, of the, I think one of the original ecosystems of, you know, the, the people behind Groupon, the people behind you know, Grubhub, they, they all said, hey, we should have a community where people have ideas and can bring an idea to life, but you may not necessarily be a CTO. You may not necessarily be a technology person, right? So long story short, there's the IHCC is inside of this building. It's in the Merchandise Mart and it's called the Illinois Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. So that's, Rosalado is a part of that commerce. Um, and the president, he would always hear me talk about these app ideas, right? He's like, man, Rick, you've got these ideas, you know, bring it to life, man. There's this competition coming up. It's a, it's a, it's an incubator program from Capital One. Uh, they're looking for minority owned service businesses. So, you know, blue collar industry uh, business owners that have ideas that want to bring them to life. So I, this, I, the idea that I had at first was workforce management. I was like, I'd love to be able to have an application or something come up of where every time an, an employee enters somewhere in the building, there's these um, beacons that will, you don't have to clock in anymore. You don't need your phone anymore. It just registers and knows you're there, right? And you're doing your work. Because what, what's our issue right now is a lot of times clients will say, well, did you come in? Did you work? What did you guys do? This and that. And I was getting tired of that. So it first really did start with that. But I quickly realized Beacon Technology and Beacon Management is like two companies because you have to know how to run that and the technology behind it. 
Uh, and I was like, okay, I'm one man, right? Well, I don't know this that much about all this. But then I started, you know, really gravitating toward that, that 1871 community. And I met the right people, shared a lot of my ideas. And then I started to think, man, well, if I want to scale my business and I want to grow, then I need sales. So if I need sales, I need to stop doing what I'm doing with pen and paper. Because everything I did was chicken scratch. Um, it's sure. literally, it's funny. I still have a little box that everybody laughs at because that is where my quotes and estimates from 2013 to 2016, all live there right now. And that's how I did it. And um, I have like five or six salespeople that's, that work with us now. And they're like, in, in the beginning, Rick, you know, well, how did you price this out like three years ago? I'm like, oh, look at the box. It's right there. Here, look at the, you see that right there? That ties it back. But then Rick, what's this 200 on top of that? Well, at that moment, I thought I should just up it 200 just to make a little bit more profit. They're like, well, what the hell is the science behind throwing 200 on top of a pro-? So I, that's what I really knew. This is not scalable. I, I'm not doing our company any justice. So I said, there's gotta be some automation. There's gotta be something digital behind this. And it all really did come back to Steve is the walkthrough. I, I looked, I looked, I looked, um, you know, I, I used clean guru for a little bit. I used, um, I tried to use clean intelligent at that time. These were not solutions I was looking for, even though I think clean guru is, you know, awesome. He was ahead of his time with that. Yeah. Clean intelligent definitely wasn't the solution for me, but it's okay. They, they do many things well. Um, swept, I had swept at the time and that had nothing to do with walkthroughs and estimates. So I was like, man, you know what? There's, there's nothing to do with sales. You know, there's nothing with other, other than CRMs, but a, again, a CRM doesn't help you with a walkthrough. A CRM tool doesn't help you create a bid. CRMs don't help you with proposals. So I was using client point or paper proposal too. And I thought that was great, but I was like, man, it's still missing something. So I literally just said, I'm going to do it. You know, like I, I met the right guys at that community. We entered the competition with wireframes, like chicken scratch on paper. And I got lucky that there was a gentleman from Jones Ang LaSalle on the judging panel. And he's like, man, he's like, this is not just for cleaning. This idea can be for the building services in general. Rick, build it, come back to me in two to three years. He's like, JLL would be, could be a user of this in the future for maybe like property tech, you know? And man, that's, we won the competition. We won 40 grand. And I was like, all right, let's build it. And I built a team behind it. We're still small and nimble. We're only 18, 18 months, two years from thought to creation, but 18 months of like the first person used it. You know, we were the first, we were the first company to test it out for almost three to four months. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's, that's amazing. All right. But yeah, you know, uh, so at first you didn't realize that it was a, a service industry app then, huh? You were just thinking uh, cleaning in specific. Yeah, I was just, I mean, because I only know cleaning, right? So I only thought commercial cleaning, but then as as we grew as Rosalado, so now like we, you know, Rosalado's growing at the same time, this is all happening. And I'm adding, you know, carpet cleaning, uh, window washing, handyman services, electric, plumbing, HVAC, pest control. We, we do all that, all those services. So we have another brand called Rosa Contractors and Maintenance, right? Very strong with the R, if you can see. The R is in every logo that we have. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so What's those guys are on the maintenance side, right? So as they're doing work, you know, the guy, my director that runs that, that uh, vertical for us, he's like, Rick, at some point, we, we actually could be users of Route 2. He's like, you know, you're walking through a space, a, you know, a handyman's going to walk through a space to understand what the issues are, capture photos, take measurements, hit the hot points and notes. Then that, because that's what it does, right, Steve? So it goes, the first thing is it's the digital walkthrough builder. So it creates a portrait of the space. From there, you get all your details and notes. That gets pushed into the estimating calculator. Estimating calculator, the, the data points. So let's say it's total 10,000 square feet, but 8,000 is carpet, 2,000 is tile and grout, and 500 is polished concrete. You're entering all that in the walkthrough. So then when you get to the estimating calculator, all that is preset already and inputted into the calculator. 
And then what you do is you have default settings as a merchant. So if you are Steve's cleaning company and you're a 25 an hour charge, you want 20% net margins, you have a 5% supply markup, you do 10 cents a square feet for carpet, all those numbers, they already are, there is a default already. It's a setting. All you are now doing is inputting certain other items. So then again, it just goes down the steps. So then that second step, you come up to a, a final number that then gets pushed into the proposal. Now the proposal or in the service charge section already has a service charge. It already has a line item. It, it makes your job easier to when you get to the proposal where you think, oh crap, this could take me a little bit. We've already got a sample legal agreement. We've already got a sample scope of work because if you hit restaurant, we've got on the back end, we already created the scope of work for a restaurant. Common task, right? Like sweeping, mopping, dusting once a week, high dusting once a month, your normal stuff. Now, if a place has a mezzanine and they want their plants clean, those are the type of things you've got to enter yourself. But it literally gets you where you, when you get to the proposal, you're really just checkboxing and saying, yes, I want to include this. Yes, I want to include this. So like literally you could do from walkthrough to proposal in 15 minutes and, and be done with the proposal and send it out. Like I had the best customer testimonial two days ago. This kid, young kid, full-time job as a housekeeper, but he's like, you know what? I wanted to start a strip and wax business because I know strip and wax from the housekeeping. And he's like, Rick, with route, I was at, uh, Jiffy Lube, getting my tires changed and getting an oil change. The guy happened to mention stripping and waxing. I gave him my card on the spot, did a walkthrough, calculated everything, sat in my car with the iPad, created a proposal, gave it to him before he was done with my oil change. So he's like, you know how long it takes to do an oil change? It's like 30 minutes. Yeah. He's like, accepted the proposal. I did the job three days later. He's like, that's how powerful the tool was now does it need improvements yes you know this is version 1.0 but that was for him to say that to me man i was like he just started six months ago like he just started business and i was like dude you you get it right tech you've said it before where i mean tech is not everything you cannot rely on tech for everything but but it helps it it will help you win business be more efficient but at the end of the day you still got to provide a service you still got to be the face so there, it's just, it's been fun. As you can see, I, I love, you know, I'll talk about route all day. I'll talk about the cleaning industry all day. Let's keep on going. And you were saying something about the, uh, the scope of work and you know, say you've got a standard uh, scope of work in there. And let's say somebody adds on a few tasks. Uh, will that automatically adjust the, your price point then? So yeah. You, yeah. So everything we do is, is, um, customizable and creating. So what we call it, we call it elements, elements of a proposal. So it's a template, right? So especially right now, think about what's going on with viricide, disinfection, uh, electrostatic spraying, right? So again, it takes a little work in the front end, but we have somebody in the office for Rosalado that it's their job to create templates in route. So when viricide came out and the whole spraying services, we had them create a disclaimer that you can drag and drop we had them create our one, two, three step process that we created with um, Dave Thompson, right? We did a training class with him. He helped us create a good process to just cover our basis. That, that I didn't have that before inside of my stuff. You hear me? That, yeah, no, I can't. Yeah, I lost you for a bit there. So, so I was saying like, we have people that work on specific elements and templates so then they can save them. And it's easy for you to do a drag and drop. So we try to copy, um, how the experience is with like a MailChimp, where you're able to just yeah. drag and drop a lot of things. That's what we wanted to do. We created it like it to be like an editor tool, you know? So you gotta have somebody who's creative and knows how to really kind of, you know, get going with the, with the proposal generator, but you'd be surprised how it, a lot of people just get it, you know, and, and you're able to, you know, do a print preview. So then you can see, you know, where does it cut off on the page? We're trying to improve that process too. Little did I know, spacing was actually going to be this important but it is if you want to look professional you can't have things cut, cutting off i'm like damn there is a lot to do with technology man well you know that's the thing is that you know i remember back in the day you know when i first created some of my own proposals you know i'd win i'd actually win accounts just because of how professional my proposal was. 
so it matters you know it matters. Yeah, it does yeah it yeah. really does so that's I'm definitely going to be ongoing to improve that because it's you know e-signature we don't have that right but it's definitely an important piece that we want to put in um just being able to drag and drop more images you know maybe put a video in there i mean there's there's a lot you can do but as far as for the small to medium-sized business or the starter in, in industry uh, it's way way more than enough that you need to to actually establish yourself as a professional company yeah, that's great well where do, where does the inspection uh, reports come in so our we we have inspections right but we're we're definitely not the go-to tool for that but mm -hmm. we put it in there steve because i mean it's it is it's like a walkthrough anyways right like it was inevitable that i mean we literally changed a couple of screens and we're like man we, we have to do it it's it's easy to do it so we have it more so on a like great or bad system where you just walk into a room you know it doesn't matter which room you're looking at you swipe right that's a plus, that's a you know good check mark, good job. If you swipe left, it's more of an improvement. So we actually, I take it back, there is no bad. Everything for us is needs improvement or great job. Because it's, we've learned a lot of it's emotional. You know, if you walk in and you see an inspection, if I'm the employee, because I know this from being, you know, receiving complaints from clients, if the employee walks in, you gave them six bad remarks, like, do you really think they're going to perform you know at a level to improve that day they're just they're gonna be pissed they're just not gonna be happy they no. know they're a bad job but you told them like bluntly so it's all about uh like that empowerment feeling like just empower them with some positive reinforcement and let's see what the outcome is i mean our reports they're they're okay they're not the greatest i mean they'll you'll see the cool thing about it though i'll say is you can receive them in a text message well, that was the one thing that we've seen that other technology still needs to catch on with is not everybody has email. Not everybody cares to have an email. You know, uh, if you've got, you know, my late father at 63, he's like, Rick, I, it, I'm 63. I'm not opening an email. Send it to me in a text message. So we took that to where, you know, okay, you know, let's make it easy for somebody to just pop it open in a text message, open a PDF and look at their inspection there. So that, that's probably our, one of our best differentiators is you're able to see it via text. Uh, but yeah, it needs improvement, definitely needs, you know, some more reporting and data behind it. Well, but like you say, though, not everybody has email and, uh, you know, not everybody has uh, internet. And, uh, you know, I, I imagine on most phones, though, you know, you're going to run data or, or something. And I, I think, uh, you, and I'm not sure because I'm not a tech guy either. But I think, you know, for for text or whatever through your phone, I don't know if you need internet or not. I don't think so, but no. I don't know. No, yeah, I mean, we it's... It like the walkthrough itself. So let me give you an example of because everybody just looks at route right now too as just a sales tool, but it's actually now also it helps with operations in a way of let me give you an example with we went to Buchanan, Michigan. We did a walkthrough there because we do a lot of out of state stuff. So the team did a walkthrough for us there because we can't physically go to this location. They were already out there. Um, did a walkthrough, took the pictures, got the measurements. You know, gave us the you know the hot points of the account, send it to us via text. Team here, you know, they they had, didn't have access to a laptop at the time, so by receiving it in a text message, they open up the walkthrough as a PDF, and by looking at it through their phone, just off of that, they were able to understand how to start gearing up. Because what they did at that time, though, Steve, is we already won this account. This account was already won. It's not like this was a sale. What they used route was to how to start this account, you know, how to build a portrait for us to say, this is the type of faucet we have. So this is the kind of hose hookup that you guys need. This closet doesn't fit a janitor cart. Please make sure you bring a garbage can. Um, there's no shelving here. You might want to have the maintenance team put up a shelving unit, walking through, pinpointed some of the really bad areas that needed improvement for the first day initial clean. So you start to think of, you know, as elements of being a good startup, new account, tool you know where because i we give we give feedback all the time man rick we don't have enough time to do a detailed walkthrough you know route is very detailed so it takes you area by area so like if you're if you went into an office what we do is have preset templates of an office so the minute you swipe office in route you'll see office one two three lobby front entrance 
uh, bathroom one, bathroom two, kitchen. So, but they're like, Rick, what if the office manager takes me straight into the kitchen? You're starting me up here with lobby. So I was like, all right, we've got to make this a little bit more seamless. So which is what we're doing version two right now is literally a camera app. You walk in, start taking pictures, tag it with the area name or room number or whatever, and just fly through, you know, get through it. But what I'm trying to tell people too is, again, I'm not telling you how to run your business, but think about after winning the account though, it might behoove you to actually detail, walk this account, get your take pictures of everything. Because imagine if that client complains about something and you have the arsenal to say, hold on, I actually have a picture of that room. Let me zoom in. Oh, I see what you're talking about. Okay. I, you know what? That mark was actually there when we first did the walkthrough. So that's got to be something under the tile. I mean, you wouldn't have that if you didn't take pictures of everything. And right. you know, it's almost like build a repository. This is an account. If you want it for a year, you're going to be there for a while. Like, mm -hmm. you know, get your team associated with the account. Take those janitor closet pictures. Set your team up. I mean, that's, it amazes me how people let janitor closets fall so short. And, and it's like, that's, that's, our, that's your closet that, with all your tools to succeed. And if it looks like crap, how the hell are you going to do a good job? Yeah. yeah, that reflects a lot. You look at the janitor's closet and you know how that company can run, in my opinion. Yeah, you know, that's, that's the beginning of the stickler. You should be able to stand right in the doorway and take inventory in your janitor's closet. You know, it should be that kind of order. And yeah. No, I had yeah. uh, one member of the janitorial store. Um, uh, this gentleman, he contacted me. This has been, geez, seven, eight years ago now. Contacted me, and he actually had a different type of business at the time, and it was up and down. It was a, a, a duck clean business. Okay. HVAC. And uh, he says, you know, I'm just getting tired of this. Anyway, uh, he lived uh, relatively close, you know, two hours away. And I said, well, I always like to meet you know, local people. He lived over in Rochester. And I uh, went over there and met him and, uh, and uh, talked to him and helped him. Uh, he joined as a member and uh, helped him with his first few accounts. But one of the things that, that uh, we implemented over there was uh, just what you're talking about. Uh, what we did, though, is we used the GoPro to do a video oh, of a yeah. walkthrough so we can introduce the, the team to the building so they're not walking yeah. in without being familiar, you know, from day one. So, yeah, I think that's a great idea. That's, that's I mean, if I could put a GoPro in my phone, that, that is the idea. That's the idea, Steve, is yeah. think of what if your team has to start tomorrow, but they don't have the ability to go there and actually see the account. Imagine if you could take pictures, take, build a portrait of the space, hand it to them, so that when they show up the next day, they, they almost feel like they know where everything is. Because, you know, that's the worst part is when the team starts, they don't know where the light switches are. They don't know where the janitor closet is. They didn't know that there was a second floor, you know, uh, bathroom that was hidden. Or It's just there's elements of it's already tough enough to start the first deep clean because you're cleaning up somebody else's mess to where not being able to find things because you had no idea. It's like the worst feeling because I've been there myself. And it's like, it's, you can never over communicate. You can't. Yeah, I, oh, I totally agree. I totally agree. You know, you cannot over communicate. You can't, yeah. I mean, I, tell me I over communicated, no problem. I, <laughs> that's okay, I'll deal with it. Give your, your team a tool or something to make their job easier and everybody wins. Yeah, everybody wins. That's great. Well, you're on quite a journey then with your software. Uh, and I, all I see is that just continue to, to grow and grow and grow. And uh, as you keep on uh, implementing uh, the improvements that you have in vision, so that's pretty exciting. Thanks, man. No, yeah, I'm, it's, it's, been, it's taken off. Like it's the reception we've gotten, we're over 200 customers now. We're, you know, we're talking to some franchise organizations. I mean, it, it's just, you know, being so digital is the, is the barrier right now. It's, you know, it's a hurdle for people to, to rely on technology so much, but the minute you start to entrust and use it the right way, it's, it's amazing how you can grow. I mean, that's, I tell people all the time, Rosalato, that's where I'm at because of technology. You know, we use a lot of it. You know, do I rely heavy on it? Yes, but at the same time, 
we still rely on service. We still rely on learning, cleaning techniques, training, chemicals, training. I mean, there's a lot to it. So anything that could help us just make things a little bit easier and for the team and, you know, win jobs, man, you know, there's nothing without, you're not nothing. You cannot grow without sales. That's, yeah. it does not <laughs> yeah. matter how great of a cleaner or a foundation or a culture that you have. If you're not banging in sales left and right, you, you just won't grow. Yeah, you won't. You know, and that's the, that's the cool thing about route that, you know, that you tell me is that it's a sales tool. Yeah. And, it, and it's going to make, because there's a lot of people, you know, that come into, into the cleaning world that may have experience in one or two uh, of, of, I call it a three-legged stool. You know, either they got cleaning experience, they got business experience, or they got sales experience. They may have one or two of those, but they're typically pretty rare when you find someone that's all three. Yeah. And so the sales one is a huge one, you know, that, that's a huge one. And so you guys are just making it easier for people that really don't have a, a sales background, but now you're giving them a tool that will enhance that for them. You know? Yeah. That's no, yeah. It, I mean, it's, it's, it's always a testament when we're, because again, we always see firsthand things with Rose Lotto and like we had a HR director come on board as an operations. I turned this guy into an operations manager and he's like, Rick, I come from the HR world. I'm like, well, for me, people is operations. So I'm like, this is, this is gonna work, trust me, trust me. So, but what happened is the first three weeks, he actually ended up going on sales calls and doing walkthroughs. And he's like, what am I, you know, talk about a guy who's very big on job description. He's like, this isn't part of my job description. Rick, what do you have me doing? I'm not a sales guy. I'm like, trust me, trust me. This is gonna help you understand the industry. I mean, three weeks later, he's doing walkthroughs. Three weeks later, he's coming in, he's talking about estimates. He's, you know, pointing out pictures and, you know, talking about square footage and doing proposals. And he's like, Rick, that was the best thing I could have done because not many people know sales to that extent where I now know how to sell an account, even though I won't do it and it's not my day job. But he's like, when I'm visiting a client or visiting a team and, you know, and talking about, you know, the, the quality and talking about our service to the customer, you better believe I have my ear open now for if they have complaints about their carpets, I'm pitching carpet cleaning. If they have complaints about, you know, the, ser the service and we're only cleaning two days a week, I'm pushing them to three days a week. Cause, because he did this, the sales part where he's like, route was like a guide for me. It, it guided me to know the one, two, three step process to the end result of winning in a cup. That's fantastic. You know, another thing is too, is that, um, it, you sound as if you, you're like myself, where any of our salespeople, um, I expect them to work out in the field for a while. I'm a true believer in that you, if you're going to talk the talk, you better walk the walk. Yeah. Because yeah. I've seen in the past, I've talked to a, a salesperson and they're trying to sell me, a, a, let's say, an auto scrubber or whatever it is, and we start talking floor care and this, that, and the other. And clearly they don't know what they, they don't know what they're talking about. But they know the auto scrubber, you know, that piece of equipment, but they don't know the process in which how to do this. You don't feel comfortable with that. No, no. So I think that's, it's very, like that's you, very important. You start to lose, yeah, you lose trust, you know? And that's yeah. where we I'm always like, laugh because every, so the two developers on the project for route have all cleaned. They've stripped and waxed. They've washed floors. They've done sales calls. The business development and my head of customer success have gone, they've cleaned, they've, they've, done bids they've done estimates they've did post-construction cleaning so when they're talking to customers like they're talking to talk because they've walked the walk you know and it's and that that's the start to differentiate us as a company too because we're not a technology company first that got into the industry we're really a service business first that just so happened to build technology yep yeah. right on and a cool thing too steve so this is something maybe good for you to know too so for members to know we're going to be very we are big on integration so to the means of so we've done is it's called a zapier integration right so what this allows us to do is really to plug and play with many different softwares because i re really quickly knew because i you know i was using swept uh you know i use monday i use quickbooks and there is no one software for everything so we no. said let's be open Let's be integratable, it's called, right? To, to be able to integrate a multiple things that 
you know, you may be a Salesforce, you know, person, no right. problem. We talk to Salesforce. You may be a HubSpot, no problem. We can integrate with HubSpot. You may use Zoho, no problem. We can. So because we've been so flexible in the beginning of the build, we we started off the, the build and the, the development knowing we were gonna speak to all these other softwares. So like right now we speak to Monday, Slack, QuickBooks, uh, Salesforce, HubSpot, where you do things once, right? We, when you create a client in route, it already shoots the information to QuickBooks, shoots it to Monday, shoots it into the Slack company channel. So everybody gets pinged the minute a route client was created, even though they're not done in those systems, we're able to make, they're called zaps, right? So then every system knows, okay, let's create this client in our software because it's somebody's going to look up this client. Well, wow, that's impressive. That, yeah. is that, that's probably one of the biggest hurdles that a lot of people have is that things don't integrate, you know? Yeah. And often there's too many softwares. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's, yeah, that's impressive. That's fantastic. You know, that's the thing is, uh, uh, what uh, I was looking at the you have different um, uh, different packages for your software. So you yes. got your price starter and then you have your growth. Yeah. So we've got two plans right now, Steve. There will be a third, but we we stuck to these two for now because I know affordability is very big in our industry. I mean, ninety percent of our industry only has a million in revenue or under. So we we've yeah. got to be careful to to be able to accommodate those. And even at $50 a month, it's still pricey for a lot of people. But that's where we try to say, hey, the goal of this is to win business, right? So our job should be to make it easier for you to win that $600 a year account. If we can't help you win a $600 a year account to pay for the software, then we don't have a good enough software yet, right? Like, because at $50 a month, that's what it's gonna cost, about $600 for the year. And because to go to go lower, we still are thinking about there may be a free tier option because this is stuff that you know I probably my co-founder would say don't be talking about yet. But we're working on payment processing and invoice generating, right? So our 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 play would be we we will have a transaction fee or rate from the invoice and payment processing because we are gonna get better rates than most of the, the so softwares that are out there or you pay a monthly fee. So it's like, we'll give you the option. Like, do you want to pay a subscription fee or do you want it to just tack on to, cause you're already going to pay for it, right? If you're using QuickBooks, right. you would a fee. If you're using Stripe, you're getting hit with a fee. So it's, it's almost like it's inevitable one way or the other. But what we thought is that was important for us because what's the end result of a sale is getting paid for the sale. So it's like, we have, it's, we have to do it. So that's our next big feature that we're working on is the payment processing and invoicing because then beco then we become a necessary solution where right now route, I feel like is still a luxury. Like a lot of companies don't necessarily feel like they need it, even though you and me will say you owe it. Yes, you shouldn't, you need sales, you need this tool, but yeah, you, for sure. yeah, but it's like with the, at that point, I mean, invoicing is huge. Right, getting paid is massive. That now that that's you the, get the in business. Let's get paid. Yeah, so it's that was it, it was almost inevitable, and we did that too because we said there's companies out there like, you know, Swap Team Software. Right, those guys are doing operations phenomenal. Yeah, I don't want to do operations. You know, I want to start and be the end. Let the the meat and potatoes because there's a lot to do there. You know, scheduling, clock mm -hmm. in, clock out, uh, supply ordering, man. It's amazing how much software you could build for cleaning, like to yeah. run a clean bit. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that, about a scheduling, you know, piece in in the uh, in the software. Because as you know, you know, you you know, you started from one account and built that. You know, it, it's it's not so hard to manage X amount of accounts, but at some point, it's going to be helpful to have some software. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. I mean, that's where there. So I started probably year three is when I really said. I needed software, but I, it's amazing how there's a couple of users right now. I mean, this kid, Jason, he was seven months into the cleaning business and he already had swept. He signed up for route. He was using QuickBooks. I'm like, dude, damn, that that's early on. But he said, I, I already knew like, 
I didn't want to be stuck behind the desk doing all this manually. I need to be in the field doing business development, running operations, but I need to be able to do it from the palm of my hand or in a, in a tablet. Yeah. So I was like, man, kudos right. to you. Kudos to you, yeah. yeah. So you really don't know when it's too soon, right? Like out there, it's almost like it really depends on you as, as yeah. a business owner. Yeah, I think because, well, it falls into, like we were saying, affordability, you know, because when we get first get started, you know, we can't afford to, to you know, to bring on a lot of things. But, uh, yes, yeah, so you know, I always uh, think that as soon as you can afford to bring on technology and whatever piece yeah. it can be, do it. You yeah. know, and generally, it's, it's typically the, the quality control uh, piece that, I, that I'll talk to people because it, in most cases, that's the most affordable piece for them to get started with. Yeah. And one of the most important because it, it just blows my mind away about how many cleaning companies don't do any quality control. They don't do any, yeah, you, we, Steve, we just, so right now we had our director of operations, like this is all real time happening. He's in uh, Dayton, Ohio. We had to, we had to, you know, we do a lot of affiliate partner, like subcontractor uh, partnerships. Um, that these, they had no inspections. They weren't doing any quality control. We gave them all this way, you know, this is how you do it, this is how, this is how we do it. You know, we're not telling you how to run your business, but this is what we expect because the client expects it. You know, it's, we're not asking for us, we're asking for the client. Yeah. And their response was, you know, we only inspect when there's a complaint. I was like, what? I was like, come oh. on, man. Like, what oh. you, how is that? I, I freak out, we, we inspect every week. That's, <laughs> we over inspect. Yeah, I mean, but it's just oh. like, we just want to know our teams are, are doing their job, doing it right. And again, we, the thing for me is, I'm sure you agree, is we tell people to inspect, to look for um, areas that we can add value or improve on. Don't right. look for the bad, yeah. you know, don't, because you're going to find bad every day. Oh, you, yeah. Well, you know, that, that's one of the things too, you know, when we talk have uh, lead people or supervisors, you know, that are in a management position, you know, history is that generally you're, you're coming to your cleaner, your frontline cleaner or technician, and the first things out of your mouth is we had a complaint, you know, so it's always negative. And you touched base on that earlier. You know, that's not the case. You, you know, you have to, you have to make sure that you give them uh, good feedback on everything, you know, good, bad, and indifferent, but you have to also layer it too. Yeah. Because yeah, uh, this is like they say. You know, you can you can come home, kick the dog every night. You know, eventually the dog's gonna bite you. Oh yeah, that, that trust me. I don't want no dog bites. I, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, and then, so the other plan too, Steve. So it's the it's the starter plan is your kind of limited plan, right? To to kind of get things going, and then the growth plan is our unlimited. You know, you just oh, okay. at it, use everything you want. We we didn't go like the location route or the per user route because we really just wanted to have a fixed we wanted you to know how much this is going to going to run you every month so you have an idea of okay if this is working for me i gotta make i gotta figure out how to make this work and, and pay for it yeah. if we did a per user per location you'll never know you know i mean that's a way i guess you can scale and grow with a with a user of, of a software yeah. but i mean i've been on that side where it's almost like a catch 22. If you're growing so much, we're just going to cost you so much more, you know? So why to keep it at a fixed rate? Uh, yeah, like I said, we're thinking about the free, free option and there may be a third with, cause we're also working on, you know, client portal work order systems, because again, that kind of goes with sales. It's yes. an increase in tag order. So we've gotten a lot of requests for that. Um, but I think that's where we'll pretty much probably stop is anything and everything that can help you with sales and new business. And then on the, you know, accounting and getting paid yeah. Uh, side. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Well, I'm, I'm, uh, I'll have to uh, look. I look forward to seeing what you come up with. You got a lot of good ideas yeah. there. You know, things that people need, you know, uh, you, you're going to do well. No doubt about it. Well, look, look what you've done already, you know. No, I have. I appreciate it. Yeah. I know I, I want to do, I want to be able to give you a, a, uh, up-to-date demo on the product too at some point just so you can kind yeah. of see it and get your feedback and you know i'd love to maybe even set up some kind of like a webinar for all the you know the janitorial janitorial store members and just say hey yeah. you know instead of doing one-on-ones hey let's just do a yeah. group webinar do a demo that way so everybody i was going to ask you about that yeah 
Yeah, because that, that's what I really like to do is uh, to where we have a, you know, do a Zoom webinar uh, to where you can actually demo that, you know, and just we'll, we'll blast it out to our network, you know, our members and non-members and, uh, you know, get, get some people in here. Okay. That'd be great. So we'll, we'll have to set that up. Okay. Yeah, we got, uh, of course, now you're only, your focus is, uh, well, it can be used on residential, right? Yeah, so, so that's been a big, another big play is we've had some residential users that have just been nonstop telling me, Rick, you know, so think of residential where they don't really need a proposal just yet, right? They don't really need, I mean, their estimates, they base it off of, you know, one, two, three, four bedroom square footage of a house. They're not really doing walkthroughs to an extent. But then what's happening, I guess, is, you know, because I don't know residential market as much as, you know, I, I, I just don't. I, that's not my, my sector. Oh, I can help you with that. I know that. A lot of residential, very well. I'm learning, Steve, too, is that, well, now, especially now, residential are getting commercial opportunities. So yes. when they yeah. go to get a commercial bid, they're, they're having trouble. They don't know how to do a walkthrough, right? They don't know the questions to ask or you know, production rate, their production rate's much different in a home and residential and proposals. They've never done a full blown, you know, proposal with the COI and, you know, all the different elements that you need, you know, a contract service agreement. So I am very big on actually even being that transition for them to help them get into commercial to say, you know, hey, residential business owners, you may not be doing it today, but the minute you're ready, you know, a, a, a tool like route is available for you because we've had a few that now they can't go back. Now they're like, Rick, we still do residential, but we'll keep route even for a small amount of commercial that we have because the minute a commercial opportunity comes available, I feel confident now I can jump on it where before they, they would say no to commercial business. Well, we definitely got to, we got to schedule a webinar then because you know, we've got the janitorial store obviously for the commercial industry. Then we got my house cleaning biz for the residential side of the industry. And for well, the janitorial store, you know, we started that in 2005 and uh, uh, in 2009, we started uh, my house cleaning biz. And that all came about because we had uh, residential folks have more information about residential. And I, you know, we obviously dabbled in that uh, for a while. So that's, that's how we got going in that. Yeah, but yeah we definitely got to do that because that will help them a tremendous, you know. Yeah. And that's where, I mean, and I think that's where I could, because again, we could really do whatever we want, right? As a business, um, yeah. well, who we're catering to, where if we had to figure out, and this is where I could get some feedback from you too, is, you know, if there was a pricing plan for residential companies, right? Where it's like, here, if you're a residential cleaner, here's a price plan. If you're a commercial cleaner, here's a price plan. Mm -hmm. You know, there could be some in between that do both, but you know, it is what it is. You know, again, there's so many that don't know their identity yet either anyways, where they're still trying to play with both sides. Mm -hmm. And then really just kind of from there. Again, I, there are over a million cleaning companies in the US alone. And it boggles my mind where I'll talk to other software CEOs and they're like, you know, I've got a thousand users, I've got 400, I've got 800. You know, I'm like, man, if you combine all of the softwares together in our space, they may not even be more than 10,000 users using software where it's like there's 990,000 more <laughs> that are out there. What is, what is everybody, you know, it's, it's crazy, but there, but there's a lot of softwares too. So it's could be overwhelming too. I mean, there's a lot, a lot that cater to the, you know, two people in a van type of operation True. where everything is done through the system. So, you know, it's, it's education, it's consumer education at its best, you know, it's, because you'll get people that don't, me, I, me, I'm guilty of giving up on a software after the first try because I didn't know how to use it the right way. Well, if I didn't get onboarded or reach out to customer success and actually do a proper demo, you know, I would have known to hit this button in the top corner right. and do, you know, and do this and that, because it is all about experience. I mean, that we, don't, yeah. we still have a lot of catching up to do as far as an industry with using and incorporating technology. Yeah, yeah it's exciting, you know, uh, and I think that's that's obviously what I see uh, that really is gonna make a difference moving forward is technology more than anything else. Um, you know, because we typically don't see a whole lot of change for, for equipment and systems and things like that. You know, no, you're right, yeah. 
No, yeah, you're right. It's that that's true. Like equipment and chemical and supplies, you'll see some innovation coming, but for the most part, it's it's really not that much. Like every ten years, you might see something. Where now with technology, I mean, every six months you're going to see something new. You know, facial recognition for clock-ins that just came out like two years ago. Yeah, yeah, and uh, well, you know, a thing that that excites me is that uh, now uh, your your beacons. Yeah, that's, uh, well, that's that's the future. Cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna circle back to that. I'm definitely gonna circle back to that. That that is the yeah. future for sure. Yeah, because uh, well, uh, Clean Smart uses that right right now. Yeah, uh, I don't I don't know if they've implemented it yet, but uh, they, that's what they're doing. They they've got beacons about this, I think the size of about a half dollar or so that you can place throughout the facility, and a person just uh, walks by and it automatically collects the information that they need. Yeah, no, that, I mean that that was inevitable for you know yeah. I knew I know that's going to happen, and it's and it's going to be per facility too, right? Because like you may not need it yeah. in a two thousand square foot office space, right? But if you're in a chain of daycares that are all ten thousand square feet and all are pretty much cookie cutter, you might want to sign. You know that may be a perfect environment for that. You know, well, like you say, you know the. the, the that I, I, I never did like is, you know, the, the geofence because you couldn't narrow down that geofence enough to, to really acknowledge that the person was where they're supposed to be. Oh, no. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the black hole. Like, yeah. yes, I know you clocked in. I know you clocked out. But, like, what were you doing in between that time? That's what yeah. always frustrated me. And, you know, yeah. kudos to them for, for, for yeah, that is something I'd always love to work on because I know it's possible and it's going to be even more and more possible as all these other developments of technology come about. You know, I'm, cities are trying to be smart cities now too. So oh, smart yeah. buildings. So it's, it's crazy, man. It's, we are, we're on the cusp of a lot of cool stuff. But at the end, like, you know, you're, you're, I always like when you touch on tech will help, tech will improve, tech will make you a more efficient business owner, but it's still, there are still fundamentals to, to what we have to learn and be as business owners. Right. Yeah. In touch. You can't, you know, yes, robots can sweep and scrub a floor, but there's a human that turned that machine out. So. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. Well, yeah, I better let you go. I think I've kept you on here, what, an hour or so? Yeah. So let's do, yeah, but Steve, I, I'm definitely pumped to, I would love to see Route to be some kind of a, a technology partner for you on, on the janitorial store and, and yeah. with your members because as you'll see, you know, oh, man, we our true mission is to empower the industry with, with these tools, with just everything in general. I mean, we do so much more than just, just route, right? I mean, we we're we we have an agency. We we help people build websites. We help people with content SEO because we're already doing it, man. Like it's, I'm already doing it for Rosalato for route. It's like these guys. It's they just love doing it too. So we we have a lot of fun doing it and to to work with the organization you guys and how many members you've you've had like it'll take me 10 years to get there right because you st it takes time to build the network so that's yeah. that's the value there with working with somebody like you yeah well you did you know that we own a marketing agency no i didn't see that oh, man. Yeah. You, you most see, people dude? don't yeah we, we've You're owned my... a marketing agency for quite a long time started from scratch and built it but yeah it's a marketing systems by design okay we do exactly what you do, you know, help everybody, whatever they need, you know, Facebook ads, build websites, yada, yada, yada. And our, our average just, customer, it's, our average. It's almost inevitable, right? Because you're yeah. doing it for yourself again, for janitorial yeah. store. It's like, I mean, do you, you know, if, if you can help, you can help. Yeah, well, yeah, when you have a built-in client list, you know, and I, you know, and I can't say we did that on you know, intentionally, leave, leaving the, the marketing piece off you know, not to really, really in, in depth, you know, for on our sites. I, I can't say we did that intentionally. It just worked out that way to where we eventually built a, 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 an agency to, to provide that need, you know. But you know, our average customer, I think, is probably about 1.5 million on the marketing side. Um, but, you know, those are still, it's, it's interesting, even there, uh, you, the, the gaps that you may see uh, in companies that size. Yeah, um, I've talked to bigger companies, and you know the, some of the gaps that they're missing is really surprising. No, oh, yeah, um, 
Because well, there's a lot to do, right? And like it's it's almost like if you're not keeping up with it and maintaining your entire marketing effort, you know, I, I felt guilty of that too. The first three, four years, I had the same website. It was the same landing page. I, it was static. You know, it was just nothing was happening. There was nothing going on behind the scenes. Yeah. Where And if, it's amazing if you just, you know, have interviews like this, build some content, you know, do an article, throw in a blog, where if we're like us, you know, I think janitorial store and route, right? Like we could do our article and post it for you, vice versa. Right. And it's like, you're reaching a different audience that you never would have before. That's right, that's right. right. But then, you know, that's what we like doing. We, we've got what we call our, our, uh, our uh, uh, partners. Uh, and that's what we do is that we, we've uh, got our partners site and then we'll put uh, you know your uh, your logo on there uh, and probably a paragraph description but we make that clickable so it goes over to, let's say if it's route they'll be able to click on it and goes right over the route you know from our site and uh, you know because that's what it's all about you know is helping uh, drive traffic to our partners yeah. you know 100 so. percent yeah well let's do that let's let's figure out a time that, that we can do a webinar okay and uh, we'll probably have to you know we probably want to promote it for a little bit you know, yeah three weeks or so okay uh, so maybe we, you know we'll, we'll try to figure out a, a date and a time uh yeah and I'll, I'll talk to Jean too and uh see what her thoughts are but yeah we okay. definitely gotta do that no i think i'm telling you i think that would be well i mean now that i've seen you know i did that first town hall with the bscai like just seeing oh, yeah, that yeah. you can be speaking to 20 plus people at one time and then i did a webinar with 62 of us and yeah. it was structured. It was, you know, there was one moderator that was leading the charge. The points were put across, talking points, everybody had Q&A. It was pretty, pretty powerful to know you could get through something like that with such a large group and everybody walk away with, you know, value behind what, yeah. what they just saw. So I like that. So I'm like, dude, I, we have to do that. I, I, I want to do yeah. a couple. Yeah, we'll see see what uh, see what kind of numbers we can pull in. Okay. You know, it's always impressive when you, if you can get a thousand people to show up. Oh my god, yeah. I mean, the best thing, the best I've ever done was like two hundred people, and I was like, man, that's two hundred people. I was like, all right, that's that's good. That's still a lot of people, you know, that yeah. actually showed up. You know, that actually show up, and you know, yeah, that's that's a big deal because then it's the best for interaction and engagement. It is, yeah. But, uh, yeah, let's definitely do that. That that sounds like a plan. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 